Hey, you know what? We may be out of the studio, but there's always time for a little bit of networking 101, baby. You know, we expect wireless access everywhere we go, right? But uh, really, what is an access point? We kind of take them for granted, right? A lot of them are very lightweight, uh, made of plastic, seem kind of cheap, you know? Uh, but what's the miracle that's going on inside of those boogers to give us this great connectivity? To be honest with you, it's a pretty cool uh, marvel of engineering, um, especially if you're a wireless kind of kind of geek like me. Uh, but you got this box up here, and uh, made of plastic. Seriously, I mean, don't we make our switches of metal and stuff? I mean, what the why? Why is this piece of junk plastic? Um, but the reason is basically is that because we've got a bunch of different designs on how this works. So most access points, just put an AP up here, um, have internal antennas. Now on an internal antenna, you cannot have this thing actually plug it into any metal or touchy metal because then it acts as what we call a ground, a little symbol for ground there, electrically speaking, and it won't transmit out. Now some people think that if you have a uh, wireless antenna in like a metal box, um, the signal will bounce around, and th that's not true. Uh, because if it did, your receiver inside here would just explode, right? I mean, it would just nuke that whole unit out. Um, the reality of it is, is it just goes to ground. It just does, it never really does anything. Um, so we'll make these things out of plastic. And I know people will say, now, Jimmy Ray, you're full of it. Because I know that I've got devices out there that are internal antennas and they're metal. Uh, but look at like the logos, right? I know like on the Apple devices and stuff, I have people all the time, oh, my Apple's all metal and stuff. It's really, it's really cool and groovy and stuff. What's your logo made out of? Made out of plastic. Mm, that's where your antenna is, you know? And that's kind of how this whole system works, which makes it pretty groovy because that the plastic is transparent uh, to wireless for the most part. A little bit of attenuation there, but not too much. But a wireless AP is pretty groovy because I'm really doing three things at once. I'm sending out a signal which is based on a protocol called 802.11. I'm taking that signal as it comes back in from the client, and then I'm converting it, because I gotta be able to, 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 to convert that signal over to be able to actually use it on my network. My network doesn't use 802.11 frames, it uses 802.3, which is our LAN stuff, right? So it takes that frame type and it converts it to this type of frame. And then I actually need to provide some juice, which to give us some power, you can actually, you know, plug it in. You know, you've got, you know, sometimes you can plug them into the wall. That's usually not what happens on probably like 90% of the installs. You don't see this too much, uh, mainly because it costs a lot of money to put a plug in, in right? And wireless APs, because they run in um, a wireless spectrum that we call ISM, Industrial Scientific Medical, um, that means that everybody has fair and equal access to that band, uh, and that's why we use it, because we don't have to go to the FCC or whoever your governing board is in whatever company, uh, country and get any type of radio license. It's agreed that everybody can use that spectrum for free, right? And spectrum refers to basically the frequencies that we can use, you know, the 2.4 and the 5 gig. These are considered, you know, freebies that you can actually use and mess with. You can design a wireless access point at your house and use this, not be in any trouble at all because everybody has fair and equal access to the ISM band, right? That's why some people even say, oh, you know, your microwave runs at this channel and that stuff. Yeah, yes and no. I mean, it's, it, it does, but it's kind of, you know, isolated channels, but it's kind of fun to say anyway. Um, but the truth is, is that when we're bringing some power to this thing, that's also coming through yet another standard. It's an 802.3 as well, but it's an 802.3 power standard. And so that is actually coming through whatever standard that we have, AF, whatever the case may be. So we'll go ahead and put that in. And it's based on watts. And we're providing the juice into here to turn this AP on. Because what we really, we don't want ca cables hanging all over this thing like an octopus. Um, we actually just want, you know, really one cable to come in and power it and send that signal out. So what is the miracle inside of this thing? Well, What's so great is, is that they're really, they're, they're radios, like the radio in your car, right? They're able to actually transmit and receive this signal and send this out. They're able to look and condition and change that signal and modify it. And they typically, to get these things lower cost and to make them work as a system, because if I've got to set these up and configure each one of these as their own island, let me go ahead and grab my eraser here real quick. If I'm designing out a wireless network, 
it's very rare you're going to use one wireless access point, especially when I need the bandwidth and stuff that I do, because today's wireless is not about coverage as much as it's about what kind of performance do I get, right? Because I want to be able to stream TechWise TV on my phone, right? Don't you? So you got to actually have some really good APs. You're going to send them off in some type of arrangement that's going to give everybody, you know, just great signals uh, out on their network and stuff. So to set this up, but I don't, you know, let's be serious. I don't want to go out here and touch every single one of these boogers and get them all set up. No, man, I really want a system that's going to allow me to plug these into a brain that sets somewhere on my network. And that brain is some type of wireless controller that usually sets here. And that's where my configuration is held uh, on this network. So I'm just going to put a controller here and that all my configuration, all my conditioning, everything else kind of runs down here on this brain and it keeps my firmware up to date. It makes it really good. If I have, you know, somebody that says, wow, wireless access, my company provides some great stuff. I'm going to go ahead and steal this and take this to the house and run this here. Uh, if you remove this from this controller, it, it's, it's useless. It doesn't do anything, right? Because it need, all the firmware, all the code is on that controller. And that's what makes wireless access points so low cost is that your brains are down here. You're paying for your brains once. Um, your, your APs are just radios. They're only just sending out that signal. They're receiving that signal and they're converting these dot 11 frames, you know, what we call radio frames into LAN frames or dot three frames so they can communicate back and forth on our network and make some pretty cool stuff happen. All vendors access points uh, typically work the same, you know, which is great because it's the one place in network design where you have to have some cooperation, right? We don't, not everybody has the same type of clients, the same type of devices that connect to these. So we all have to agree on how these things are gonna work and device. The controllers, the features that you offer on the back end, those are gonna be the real differentiator between these APs. But in the end, uh, what type of bandwidth, what type of coverage I have, um, that's a real trick. You know, do you want an internal antenna that is hidden, which is great, or do you actually need some that have external antennas on these things so that you can actually change your range? And that's a little different. That's a whole nother network in 101. We actually have a network in 101 on, on antenna theory as well, but that does change how that AP works because every time that you take any space in here, that makes your signal drop a little bit. But again, we're getting way deep in the weeds here um, to actually cover that stuff. AP, the most important thing to keep in mind is, is that they're really incredible. They're, they're converting dot 11 frames to dot three frames. They're communicating usually, normally they're communicating back to a back end controller uh, on your network and uh, it provided some pretty great access, that's for sure.